guys. So we're using this this time to, to share some information like we shared with the previous previous video we made. Today I'm going to talk about some spinner baits and all the basic stuff about spinner baits and some things we, we don't think about or some things we neglect um, from a spinner bait. The most common spinner bait you'll find is most probably a, a willow leaf like this. Yes, I do own a pink spinner bait, there's a reason for it. In spawning times, pink is normally a good color to use, but I've got two silver um, willow leaf blades on there for, for clearer conditions because I want to see where the bait goes close to a nest or whatever. So, and then you get an Indiana blade, which is sort of half a Colorado, half a, a willow leaf, which looks like that. And these things we all know, you get the in-between willow, it gives you that sort of shape. War Eagle has a nice one like this that you can use, and then the normal big vibration maker which is your big colorado blade this is a number six and it's normally used in dirty water but i'm not going to go through all of that everybody knows all these things about spinner baits there's a couple of things that we don't do with spinner baits that we forget or neglect or think they'll just last forever firstly that's the quality of your skirt if your skirt is starting to make different colors or feeling a bit rough or that sort of thing it's not going to have the same buoyancy or pulse in the water when you stop and go or bump it across a branch or whatever so keep in mind that your skirts um, need to be fresh and new um, and they whip off easily and you can push on another one from from all sorts of different um, suppliers or whatever that's the one, the one part of a, of a spinner bait the second part is this little bearing that hangs at the bottom of this spinner bait that bearing there is most probably the most, most important, important part of this whole spinner bait. If that thing doesn't turn, this thing doesn't work. Because if you look at it without a skirt, it's basically a jig. And it's a jig with a blade. Now, the whole idea is to create a vibration in the water, to create a certain frequency in the water so the fish can relate to bait fish scattering or, or bait fish flipping off something. You've seen them when they feed and lying in shallow water. You can actually see them on the rock. And they will flip up on their sides and that makes a little flash especially when the sun's high you can see that that white or that silver or that dark flash going on in the water and that's what the fish relate to and that when they scatter give off a certain frequency that draws in the game fish which is our bass um, in this situation which will come and, and, and tune into that and focus on that and you want to try and mimic and imitate that as, as, as well as you can so that little spinner bait when you come back from a day's fishing or a week's fishing if you're lucky then you make sure that you take your spinner baits out and you check these little bearings if you knock them does your blade turn like it should if it doesn't turn give it a couple of wiggles maybe there's something in there and i use just a multi-purpose lube and i spray something in the top here and i wiggle it around a bit and make sure it's all lubed up and nice and clean because next time i pick this thing up I want it to turn and I want it to turn well. That's the first part. That's the part we, we neglect. We hate taking things out and cleaning them. We just want to hook them up and cast them up and they should work. But that's part of, part of maintaining your tackle and looking after your spinnerbait. That spinnerbait that has no skirt on, but it's not dead and lost yet. The hook's fine, the head color is fine, so there's nothing to. I'm just going to stick a new skirt on you and um, I'll use it in the future. But something that I want to just maybe touch on when it comes to spinnerbaits is playing with your blade colors um, for a reason when the sun's out and, and it's blue skies and it's beautiful outside and it's one of those days where the wind's not blowing um, and you just have a perfect fishing day to throw anything that that makes a bit of flash or shine in the water your spinnerbait needs to to match that the, 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 the bass are going to see these baits from a longer distance so you need to be more finely tuned so then you'll go for most probably just a normal silver um, as small as you can willow leaf blades not to make too much noise not to create too much of a disturbance in the water because they can see it coming from a long way match your skirt to the water if it's nice and clean have a nice pumpkin or a green sort of color skirt on there um, that's the one part but keep in mind when the sun's not out and it is dark and it is gloomy and the wind's blowing and the visibility for these fish change everything changes on your spinner weight as well so if you're sitting in a situation where you have clear water but dark skies above or the winds are howling through then they're not seeing as clearly and they're not reacting like they should so normally we would go to a bigger blade like a big colorado blade but there's also a different option 
is to change the color of your blades. So what I, what I normally do is I keep a set of blades that are painted and I paint them myself um, because I want to tweak them to where I'm going fishing. So if I go to the Vol River, I'll have a painted blade with yellow and white or just white or just yellow, but I'll have the setup because there's no sun to reflect off the blade to give it into the water. So you need something to, to match the vibration to the amount of flash coming off as well in, the, in, in murkier and darker and maybe some chopped up water. So I paint my own blades. I'll use just normally enamel. This one I've got grey on the one side and I've got a darker grey on the other side. And that'll go onto a spinner bait for, for those conditions. And when I know there's a lot of um, like flake or something around, I also like peaking the baits and putting lines down them to make it green and give them on the other side, give them something to look at with, with a little strike spot. That's the, what the Americans love calling the kill spot. There must be a dot on their crankbait because they, they reckon that the bass zoom into that dot and they go for that. So I put the dot on my top blade. There's a little red dot on the inside and there's some black dots on the other side. So this thing turns, it's going green and black as far as it um, goes. So this matches closer the, the fish, the bait fish, which they are busy hunting and struggling to see and struggling to, to grab onto because if they grab a little bream or whatever, it's a reaction bait. So they, they react to it when they see them and the spinner bait mimics that. It makes the reaction come. It goes through grass, it comes through wood, it goes everywhere where the bass can sit. Just make sure you're not just casting a spinner bait because you bought the spinner bait. If, if the wind's blowing and the water is choppy and, 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 and so on, it's perfect conditions for spinner baits and you can get them into um, any little spot and nook and cranny where you can find them and you can change that into a smoother just below the surface sort of running spinnerbait you can slow roll them on the bottom but the main key is make sure your spinnerbait works firstly so give it up a couple of drag fixes to the boat or off the bank make sure your blades are turning and make sure you match your skirts and, and the fish that are in the water so the reaction comes naturally to them. Don't try and force it on them because you will not have the success that you think you should have or deserve. I hope this helps.